October 21st, 1978. Twenty-year-old Frederick Valentik took off to fly 120 miles from Melbourne, Australia, across the Bass Strait to King Island. Valentik was scheduled to pick up some fish for a small market that employed him. Despite his youth, he was experienced enough to be a flight instructor, and Frederick Valentik had flown this route many times before. Delta Sierra Juliet, pilot to ground. Is there any known aircraft in my vicinity below 5,000 feet? Delta Sierra Juliet, negative, no known traffic. Delta Sierra Juliet, there seems to be a large aircraft below 5,000 feet. Delta Sierra Juliet, what type of aircraft? I cannot confirm, but it's four bright lights that appear to be landing lights. Unknown aircraft has just passed over me, about 1,000 feet. Is large aircraft confirmed? Delta Sierra Juliet, affirmative at the speed it's travelling. Are there any RAAF aircraft in the vicinity? Negative. Confirm you can't identify aircraft. Affirmative. Delta Sierra Juliet, Melbourne, it's approaching from due east of me. It seems to be playing some sort of game. Flying at a speed I can't estimate. Stephen Roby, air traffic controller on duty then, explains the reported UFO's movement. Uh, ...times, and uh, coming from various directions. And then he started orbiting, and uh, the aircraft was orbiting above him. And on several occasions, he sort of stated that it, towards the end it wasn't an aircraft and he described it as having a, a sort of a, a green light uh, on it and also it appeared to be um, a sort of a silver metallic colour. Delta Sierra Juliet. What is your altitude? Delta Sierra Juliet, 4,500 feet. Delta Sierra Juliet, confirm you can't identify aircraft. Affirmative. It's not an aircraft, it's... Guido Valentik is Frederick's father. Night. Uh, he's supposed to join us with friends when we went for some movie, uh, family movie projection. And uh, that night, uh, he never turned up. He didn't ring up. Normally, he's always, when he go for a trip, uh, when he return at the airport, he normally would have called us, you know, I'll be home after an hour or so. But that night, uh, it was quite strange, you know. We didn't know anything about it. We got home about 11 o'clock and he wasn't home. My wife then started to worry about it. And, and so, uh, you know, I oh, said, oh, this is too late to start inquiry. Can you describe it? Delta Sierra Juliet, it's flying past, it is a long shape, cannot identify more than that. Coming for me right now. And you describe it as being of a, a long shape, and as I said before, a, a silver colour with the various lights on it. And uh, he actually did say it wasn't an aircraft. So, it's very strange. It appears to be stationary. I'm orbiting. The thing, it's orbiting on top of me. It has a green light and a sort of metallic light on the outside. It seems to have vanished now. Confirm it has vanished. Affirmative. Do you know what sort of aircraft I've got? Is it military? No military traffic in this area. It was 8 o'clock, 8.30 in the morning. I, I Nothing still happening and couldn't see any sign of him and uh, I was just about to get up and maybe get on the phone where all of a sudden a couple of uniformed blue slacks <laughs> legged walk in the front door and at that time we realized immediately that something was wrong. Dollar Sierra Juliet, engine is rough idling and coughing. Delta Sierra Juliet, what are your intentions? 
preceding King Island. Delta Sierra Juliet. Unknown aircraft now hovering on top of me. Finally, um, we lost contact with him in a very strange way. Uh, the communications he was putting out seemed to break. Um, people describe it as a sort of a metallic sound, the last transmission that was uh, sent from Delta Sierra Juliet. Delta Sierra Juliet. Acknowledge. Do you read me? Delta Sierra Juliet, repeat, do you read me? Despite an extensive four-day search, which included using a sophisticated Orion aircraft capable of detecting any sort of debris at great ocean depths, not a single scrap of wreckage was ever found. No hard evidence ever turned up that would explain the disappearance of Frederick Valentik. But theories abound. Some say that Valentik became disoriented and saw this lighthouse. A second theory is that he saw lights of fishing vessels and then, becoming disoriented, spiraled his plane into the ocean. Guido Valentik, Frederick's father, believes otherwise. Well, after Frederick reported this uh, UFO incident, I am uh, inclined to think uh, that it could be some intelligent life in the outer space, uh, despite all the officials are trying to suppress this, or really uh, makes me very confused, because knowing Frederick would be radiated, and uh, knowing my son wouldn't make himself so ridiculous in stating things like that. So. I'm inclined to believe that there really must be something in the space that the general population may not aware to be. And I realize after this, his disappearance, which I couldn't have the opportunity before, how many calls I get from various parts of the world. And they really encourage me to believe that he could be still alive. I bet with another intelligence in the spice. One of the most bizarre attempts to prove Valentik still lives is conducted by New Zealand psychic Colin Amory. He claims that through the power of a seance, he can contact Valentik and speak in his voice. Death is something that is quite painless and is not difficult to bear. Valentic's plane and the supposed UFO were beyond the reach of radar, thus making it impossible to confirm his report and the taped conversation between Valentik and the air traffic controller has never been released. The Australian Civil Aviation Department has refused all requests to hear that tape. The department will not give any reason for its refusal. Delta Sierra Julius, acknowledge. There have been hundreds of planes that have disappeared without a trace. Valentik's disappearance is the single documented case where a plane has vanished after claiming contact with a UFO.